All right, everybody, welcome back. It's the Wake Up Crew, Ray G, joined as always by my man Jay Rich to talk some NBA playoff prop bets for this Saturday, April 23rd slate. A quick recap of last night, the Bulls got demolished. Everybody was bad. DeRozan, Vooch, Pat Will, uh, Levy, everybody sucked. If you bet any overs in that game from damn near any side, you probably missed that bet. Um, I know we talked about Zach Levine over two and a half three-pointers again. Jay, did that nope. hit? Did that hit? No, it nope. did not. Didn't uh, hit. Two for four. Vucevic's par, that didn't hit. His fantasy score nope. didn't hit. Caruso didn't hit. I mean, it was just a shit show. I mean, we can't predict those blowouts. So we're on to the next one. But we did say under Giannis's fantasy score, and they blew him out so bad, that hit. CJ McCollum over fantasy score, absolute monster. That is something I will continue to target as long as New Orleans is alive in that series. Um, and then some of the other the the other bets that we had talked about. I mean, just blowout situations, right? But we're going to get back on the high horse today. So let's get into today's slate right now. For all the high-flying action, take a step back and relax. It's time to count that money. The NBA props, no look any further. You know what time it is. Presented by Prize Picks, NBA props. Let's count that money, man. I all right, Jay, I'm going to talk about a couple of unders that I'm looking at taking in this matchup today over on Prize Picks. And right now we're recording this in the morning time and they do not have the full the full slate on the board right now. But Joel Embiid, we've we've heard about the thumb injury, all of that stuff. I'm not as concerned about that. I think Embiid is going to continue to do his thing on the offensive end, but he has not hit this number, this 50 fantasy score, the entire series versus Toronto. I do think Philadelphia closes them out tonight. It's it's do or die for the Raptors. But Embiid, his fantasy score has dropped in the series from 56 to 54, and now you know it's sitting at 50 in this one. And I just don't think he's going to do enough defensively to add to the addition of the offensive scoring that he's going to do. Uh, probably not going to get a ton of assists in this matchup. So for us, the model looks good on Joel Embiid. Um, I like his under fantasy score in this one, even though I do think he's going to have a strong game scoring points. Uh, Ray, to your point about Joel Embiid, one of the biggest edges I found is that the books actually have his par at 45 and a half or 44 and a half, but prize picks it's 48 and a half. Wow. I'm not sure why it's sitting at 48 and a half, but if you like the under in this matchup, would you consider a 48 and a half par over a 50 fantasy score? I think that's one to be willing to bet. Um, he hasn't hit this number at all. He's hit 38, 42, 48 in this series. And we know the Raptors will probably be targeting that thumb. You know, the biggest issue for Joel is he gets to the line and we saw him struggle in game three to shoot free throws. Not that he's shooting a terrible percentage, but you could see the finger was bothering him towards the end of the game. So for me, Ray, I think the biggest issue is that you see this over under a fantasy score at 50, but you see the par at 58 and a half. And so we know that on the books, we already have a three point edge. To your point, Joel Embiid averages a steal and a block per game. That's six points in fantasy score. So if you think he can, he's going to go under on his par, I think it's just a better bet knowing that Joel Embiid has the potential for a three and four block game. So I'm be taking the under on the par instead of on the fantasy score. How do you feel about Joel Embiid kind of I, knowing all that information? I, I do like that, Jay. It's only separated by a point and a half. And then the fact that I don't have to worry about Embiid somehow getting three blocks and a steal. And then right there, that's 12 points. So even if he suffers a little bit in the rebound department or takes a backseat in scoring, which I don't think will happen, um, I think that's a great process play, Jay, with them being so close. And again, for those of y'all out there, I mean, point rebounds and assists on prize picks with the fantasy score are worth more than on the par. So I'm with you, and I like the Embiid under the par. Love it, love it, love it. Jay, where are you going? The next one I want to talk about is a guy that we are going back to the well with Carl Anthony Towns, mm -hmm. and I'm going under his 38 and a half par. Now, I was looking at the points because I think the points is the better bet overall, but the issue is, is the books actually have him at 24 and a half points and prize picks has him at 23 and a half points. So for me, I'm going to be rolling with what the bookmakers have, and they have 38 and a half on the books for Carl Anthony Towns, and it's juiced to the under. We've seen the way he's been utilized. He's been playing a lot of the perimeter. He hasn't been even getting a ton of rebounds. His scoring is down. And they're playing, you know, at home. But again, I just don't think it really matters. He, he hasn't been a big factor in this series. And part of me wonders if maybe he's been hearing all this criticism and now is going to be the game he really blows up. But he's only had a good performance in one game so far. Like you see, 27 par two games ago and 14 par the game before that. So for me, I think I'm just rolling with what the trend is telling us, and that's that Cat's probably going to go under in this game. 38 and a half is still a little bit too high, and I'd be rolling with the under. Yep. 
Cat is another one targeting the under. I want to see his fantasy score total to see where that's at. But it's he's gets in foul trouble way too often. He's in foul yep. trouble. He's sitting for extended periods. Um, this is outside of that one game. Carl uh, Anthony Towns has been very, very underwhelming in this one. So whether it's the par or the fantasy score, I like the under on both. Um, Minnesota, good young team, but I don't think they have the horses to, to keep with Memphis. And quite honestly, I just don't trust Carl Anthony Towns. So I do like the under, his par. I will check to see what the fantasy score is, figure out where the bigger edge is between the two, and then I'm taking the under. Another underplay that I'm looking at is in the Utah game, Rudy Gobert. We went to his fantasy score well, back-to-back games. It was set at 36 or 37 fantasy score, I believe, and he has not eclipsed that total. Uh, Even when you look at his par, he's averaging 26.6 over the last five games. Throughout this series, he has failed to hit this number as well. And the same the same sort of thought philosophy that you had with Embiid fantasy score uh, versus his par, I think the same principle applies with Rudy Gobert. He's not going to score a ton. He has not been scoring in this series. He will give you some blocks and a steal here or there, but I think the under Rudy Gobert's par is something I'm looking at, and I would like this better than the fantasy score so I don't have to worry about the increased point total for the rebounds or him getting a couple of blocks in this game and somehow eclipsing that fantasy score total. But Rudy Gobert under is what I'm targeting in this matchup. Yeah, no, like you said, he hasn't been scoring a lot. And in the last game, he didn't even get a ton of rebounds, which was shocking. He's been hitting, you know, 16, 17 rebounds. And last game, he just didn't quite get it done. I think we'll see what happens with Luka back and kind of how that impacts the Mavs offense overall. But I think it's just Rudy Gobert and Dwight Powell haven't been utilized very heavily in this series. And we've seen this across the board with Steven Adams and Jared Vanderbilt. A lot of teams are playing smaller, they're running and gunning, and this has caused the bigs to really underwhelm overall. We keep taking cat unders, we keep taking Joel unders. It's just a game dominated by wing play in the NBA right now, and we're seeing a lot of these bigs still get overprojected. So I'm very much invested in Rudy Gobert, and I really like this underplay, Ray. All right, give us your last one for this slate. So the one that I'm looking at, I don't know if I'm going to put a ton of money on it. It's more of a 50%, 25% play, and it's Jason Tatum's assists. So the thing with Jason Tatum, right, is that he's been actually getting a lot more dimes than people even realize. His last five games, he's gotten over five and a half and four of them. But the bigger point for me is that he's trending the right direction. And Ray, I think the bigger philosophy here, and it's not a data play, it's more game style. I think that Brooklyn is playing him the way Kevin Durant gets played. They play him, they double him near the top, they force the ball out of his hands, and that's the reason why Tatum isn't going over in a lot of these games. And so for me, you look at what that's caused, it's caused an increase in assist totals. Now, overall, I'm not really sure how I feel about it. The data said that he's probably still not necessarily going to go over, so it's not a 100% play from the data perspective. But the way this game is trending, the way this series is trending, it's shown a lot more from the role players and from Jalen Brown than it has from Jason Tatum. And he really hasn't had that big takeover game offensively. He scored 30 points in the first game, but then came back and didn't even score 20 in the most recent one. I think we're going to see that trend continue. And I think that's the way Brooklyn's going to continue to play him. So I'm hesitant on a big over, and it's not necessarily going to be a core play, but I think if he was to go over, It would be because they play him the same way and he goes over this number eight and ten assists in his last two games. Ray, how do you feel about that overall? And and again, it's not a pure data play. I like it. I like it. Let me tell you why. He's he's exerting a lot of energy defending Kevin Durant. So that is why he hasn't been scoring. He's kept Kevin Durant underneath a 37 fantasy score. Kevin Durant, I believe, is leading the playoff in turnovers. Uh, that is why Jason Tatum is not scoring a ton. It has nothing to do with his offensive prowess. It's how much energy and how much effort he's exerting on defense and what they're doing to just stop Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. Now, Brooklyn is at home, and if there's going to be an explosive game from the Nets, it has to happen in this matchup or it's over. They will be swept. So I really, really am waiting to see see what Bruce Brown's fantasy score opens up at. I don't mind the Jason Tatum five and a half assist line, but Bruce Brown is somebody that I will be targeting uh, for his fantasy score. I know in the last game, when you just take a look at his par, which is set at 23 and a half, he had 35 um, in the the last game, eight in the first game. It was just a complete dumpster fire for everybody in that matchup. But Bruce Brown's fantasy score is something that I will be looking at. I don't mind the Tatum assist play. I really feel good about Carl Anthony Towns and Rudy Gobert going under in their matchup. And Joel Embiid, uh, the MVP that he is, I do think the under 
is the correct play. So, Jay, as always, you know, the fantasy score, all of those aren't all out right now. So yep. probably, hopefully, within the next hour and a half, Prize Picks will release the rest of the fantasy score lines. Come back, check the comments. I will post my fantasy score plays. But I do like this core that we have of Embiid under, Carl Anthony Towns under, Rudy Gobert under, and a little less confident play. Like, those three are green lights for me. They get green boys. Uh, but yellow light... Uh, if you want to add Jason Tatum over assist total, I do not hate it. I will be waiting for Bruce Brown, uh, his fantasy score, and then see a couple yep. of other guys. Jalen Brunson in that matchup with Dallas. And er other than that, man, I, I think I want to stay away from the Nets-Sixers game. You I meant the Nets-Boston game. You just don't know what you're going to get out of KD. Don't know what you're yep. going to get out of Kyrie. But I do trust um, that Bruce Brown probably can have a good game at home in this matchup. So we appreciate you tapping into the content. If you like, subscribe, comment, let us know what you're looking at, who you're playing. And as always, in this data-driven process that we have, if you tail, give him hell. And if we fail, don't bail. We'll be back tomorrow on Sunday for more NBA prop bets.